Hi guys, so I've been running a Firewire interface for years and years and years. Uh, I've been running the Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56, which has served me well, but Firewire is not officially supported anymore. It's causing me so many problems. So I'm switching to the RME Radat interface. So I'm gonna retire the Liquid Sapphire and I'll show you what I'm doing and install it today. So when I got the Liquid Sapphire 56, um, it was a great unit. This was whew, five years ago, 2011 or so, um, give or take. And at the time, um, the Mo Studio was only tiny. We've got a lot bigger. But we got the Liquid Sapphire 56 because it was an eight channel in, eight channel out interface. But it also had two ADAP ports in and two ADAP ports out. So it was another 16 channels in another 16 channels out, so that's 24 in, 24 out. That's more, more than a lot of people need. I mean, you can record a full drum kit and a full band and maybe have a couple of channels left over. The issues I've had over the years are things like latency being the biggest one. Uh, most studios up till recently, you would probably have had you know, a hardware preamp and then you could have gone into compressors, EQs, then fed the sound back out live to the artist. But what everyone does now, including me, is you go through the software, Pro Tools, Reaper, whatever, and do all your compressors and everything in real time in software. The problem is that there is a set latency associated with your interface. And it takes a few milliseconds to get the sound into analog, convert it to digital, get that to the processor, get the, the audio processed as you've set things up, then get it sent back to the interface, then have it converted to analog again before being shoved out to the headphones or monitor speakers. Now, when I got the Liquid Sapphire, it was Firewire or USB, really, was the choice. And USB pretty much sucks for audio because the way that USB works is that what's called a packet system. That it takes a big bunch of data, stores it up, then sends it as a big chunk, which is fine for hard drives, it's fine for mice, keyboards, whatever. But for audio, this is a big problem because it's waiting while it stores up some information before it gets sent. So the other option with Firewire is it was a much more consistent bit of data, bit of data, bit of data, bit of data, go, 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 go. Now, this has worked for a long time and I've got this, the latency down to 256 samples, 256, which is about six milliseconds in, six milliseconds out, so that's a total of just over 10 milliseconds, which is just about usable in terms of kind of between the actual sound being made and the process sound coming back out. So that's that kind of, that delay that you hear. Now, if I can get that down to about four milliseconds, that's roughly the speed of sound in between your hands. If you're playing piano, that is that distance in terms of sound when you work it out in terms of maths. Which means if you can get it down that low, your brain can naturally cope because it's used to that kind of timing difference. We, we, we live in a world of physics and our brains adjust. We think we're hearing things instantly, but we're not. We're actually hearing things a few milliseconds after they happen most of the time. And if it's too many milliseconds, the brain cannot deal with that. Now, the Firewire interface that I have has been great, but recently I've started to have some issues. Um, because Firewire, like USB, does store up some information before it gets sent over 
to the computer and then processed, it's a lot less than USB, but it's still a significant chunk. If I'm going through seven or eight plugins in a row, the processor does not have time to go through all of that before it can be uh, waiting for the queue to send it all back out. This is why if, you, if ever you played with latency on an audio interface, you'll find that you get these pops and crackles if it's really short. And then if it's long, it doesn't do that, but you get that horrible kind of delay and bleh, throws, you, throws you out. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm not going to be using Firewire anymore, that's going. And I'm gonna use the RME Radat. So this is a PCIe card, so this is going to go straight into the computer. And this is the equivalent of going, taking the audio straight into the veins of the motherboard. So this is gonna cut out USB, cut out Firewire, and literally just go straight through this socket here, straight to the processor. Bang, instant. So what does this do and what doesn't it do? What this does is it's 32 channels in, 32 channels out of digital audio. Pretty much instantly. What it does not do is take analog sound and turn it into digital. And that's what I need the converters for. And that's why I've got a Focusrite Octo Pre Mark II. Um, I have an Alesis AI3, which I think I'm gonna start using again. And I'm going to repurpose the Liquid Sapphire to do exactly this. So it's not going to be a Firewire interface anymore. I'm not gonna use the Firewire at all. I've reprogrammed it so that the analog mic preamps come straight in, get converted to digital, and then instead of going through the whole Firewire circuit and taking forever, they then go straight out of the ADAT port on the back and straight into this. And that's it, done, instantly, at the speed of light, because uh, ADAT is light pipe, it's optical, it uses light, which means it's instant. And as good as the Firewire interface has been, this should, in theory, cut down on any kind of issues and take the bottleneck out of the situation. Next thing to do is we're gonna pull out the computer, throw away the Fireware interface, store it, and put this in with its little expansion board instead. Now this is why it's a good idea, if you can, when you're building a computer, to uh, put cables on the back of it that are a bit longer than you need. So you can just slide the whole thing out and everything stays plugged in. Now the one thing that's gonna come out is this Firewire cable, because hey, guess what? That's the thing that's going. So uh, all I have to do is unscrew the damn thing. And thank you very much for your kind service, sir. Get lost. So let's just grab the necessary parts from here, because there are a couple of uh, expansion pieces that come with this. So the first thing to do is install our uh, board. Now that's easy enough, you just pop your board into a PCIe times one slot. Something that's interesting to notice, any of these PCI Express slots will accommodate this card. Even though they, uh, some of the 16 times one or eight times ones go on further lengthwise, they're all compatible physically with each other. So if you've only got the longer slot spare, that's okay. They fit, they work. Don't panic. Okay, yeah, man. I may need a slightly thicker. Uh, a bit for this. Use my uh, trusty multi bit magical screwdriver. There we go. So that goes in nice and solid. Let's take out a blanking plate. I may as well uh, place the expansion board right next to the main board because then I can look at it from the back and just associate the two. So this 
doesn't plug into the motherboard. This just plugs in through an expansion slot on the top of the two cards, which means that I need to hold this steady while I screw it in, because it's not anchored in by anything. Which does also mean I'll have to be a little careful plugging cables in. So the expansion is simple enough. You just plug your uh, cable in the right way around, one and two. And that is that, that's done. Dead simple. So this MIDI cable shall go in the correct way around. And this breakout, which is for all the uh, digital sundries, the AES and SP diff, that can go in there. They may sound unnecessary, AES and SP diff, there's two channels each. Think, oh, you've got 32 channels, what do you need them for? Well, so I end up with something like Focusrite ISA1, which is a nice preamp and can have a digital output. I can just send that directly into here without having to jump through other digital converters. That can save me a lot of hassle. So technically I can make this 36 in and out. And that was that. Nice and simple, let's fire up the beast, uh, make sure the drivers are set, and then I'll go around the back and I'll plug in the uh, ADAP converters that I have. Let's do it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we have it. And um, I'm running at 64 samples of latency. That is 1.4 milliseconds of latency going in. That's ridiculous. This is a full mix running, um, including master bus processing, everything that works. Not a single frozen track, not a single pop or click anywhere. I'm really looking forward to using this with 32 channels in and 32 out with no latency. This is gonna be incredible. Uh, can't wait for it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you found this useful, then uh, give us a like. Uh, any questions, uh, send us a comment in the description. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't done already. And thanks for watching. I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios. See you soon.